Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to mix up your Lego Mindstorm EV3 Reptile build by adapting the colour sensor which you'll find in your pack. If you look at the photo, you'll see at the bottom right at the front, I have the colour sensor. That's pretty much all I've changed. I've put that sensor on which you'll find in your pack. Obviously it needs to face downwards because it's a following a line because it's a line follower, obviously. Um, yeah, I just put that on the front. That's all I've changed the build. You'll probably be able to figure it out yourself how to put it on. If you can't, just comment and I'll do another video. Um, sorry for any bad editing that I've done. I've literally just got this Mac and I'm trying to still figure out how my way around it and how to use it. Any problems or comments, feel free to just get in contact with me and I'll try and help and answer any questions. So I promise you the build uh, is exactly the same, I've built it as the instructions say, uh, just that colour sense is different. So there's the first big motor, then we have the brain or the brick or the programmable brick, whatever you want to call it. Then we have the small motor which you'll find in your pack, that thing with the light, that is the colour sensor if you didn't know. And then we have the big motor and that is connected to the neck. Um, which obviously is how the snake is able to open his mouth and close it. So this is my works robot and as you can see as he's going down the line he's sort of going that left and right movement. That is because he has two motors which are driving him forward. So when he's on black the A motor is on and the B motor is off. And when he's on white the B motor is on and the A motor is off. So that's why he has that left and right movement as he's going forward. There are lots of people on YouTube who explain how that works um, in a lot more detail than me. So go and have a look on YouTube because, um, yeah, there are better people who explain it much more clearly than I do. So the snake is doing exactly the same thing. It's just harder to see. But the point I'm trying to make is that when I flipped the robot on the side earlier in the video, we only had the two motors. However, the two motors weren't what was driving the the robot forward or the snake the snake had one motor behind the brick which was driving it forward and the other one was used at the neck so we can't do that one motor on one motor off um, because we, we don't have enough motors basically so I'm going to show you how it's worked and how we do it by showing you the software so this is the program. This was written in the Lego Mindstorm EV3 Home Edition. If you had the Education Edition, then it might be slightly different. Also, um, just as a little side note, Home Editions actually differ on the versions. If your, your version differs to mine, bear with me. The idea is still there. Um, you can do exactly the same, but different. I don't know what would it be different thresholds um, would be uh, something else. It, I've had problems installing the latest edition onto my Mac. So if you have had that issue and have overcome, can you please let me know? Because I am trying, but I'm not getting anywhere. And to be honest, I'm, I'm get, finding this version very glitchy. Sorry for the side note, but uh, any help would be fantastic. So back to the reality, back to what we're all here for. So first of all, this looks quite easy, and it is. This, first of all, we need a loop, which can be found in the orange section. The flow controls, and it is the third one across. It says loop. Then you want a switch. This is in the orange section, and it's the fourth one across. So the loop, first of all, we'll go for, needs to be unlimited. This means that everything in your program is going to run forever and ever and ever until you physically pick up the robot and cut or terminate the program or the robot runs out of batteries. So that is why we have unlimited because we don't know how long the track is going to be. So I, I do it because sometimes I do it on four, sometimes I do it on 12 pieces of wood. Um, you know, we never know. So I pick it up physically then and, and terminate the program. So the switch which is this thing in the middle here, this looking complicated thing. It took me a while to get used to switches. I'm still not 100% with them, so I won't explain what they do. There are millions of people on YouTube who do know what they do and therefore would be better at explaining it to me. So rather than me confusing things or saying something wrong, um, I will let all those cool people who are on YouTube explain it for me. 
So we're going to go for a color sensor, clicking the button on the on the switch here, go down to color sensor, into compare and click reflected light intensity. Now you can have ambient light intensity, but I pick reflected light. Then I'm going to set my threshold value. I'm going to say it, if it's less than, so clicking this and clicking that, less than 20. If the threshold value is less than 20, okay? So that's that's what that sort of says there. If this is true, we switch to this part of the program. We have two types of motors. Okay, when I switched the robot on his side, you saw different motors. The B motor, this medium motor, was at the tail. Then we had the brain or the brick or the programmable brick, whatever you want to call it, that EV3 brick. Then we had the A motor. Now the A motor connected the body to the snake's head. It is the small one, the very, very small one that looks very funny. It would have been in your kit along with two of the motors. The other big motor, this is what I don't want you to get confused on. The other large motor is the one that controls the uh, snake's neck and face, okay? That's the motor that makes your snake go forward and hiss and open its mouth, okay? We can ignore that motor for this part of the program. We don't need it. We just need the, the motor that's by the tail that pushes the snake forward and we need that small slash, it's called a medium motor, that medium motor that makes the snake's head turn left and right. And you've probably now guessed how this actually works, but I'll explain it anyway. Okay, now most line followers you'll find on the internet have that on off state like I was trying to explain with my works robot. However, for this, we always want the motors on. We always want the motor, that B motor, to push the robot forward. And we always want the small, medium motor, I should call it, sorry, going left or right, depending on which state we're switching to. So if this is true, basically the B motor is going to push the snake forward. That's going to be on for, we're just going to keep it for on, not rotations, not seconds, not degrees. We're going to put it on. And it's going to be at a speed at 20. If you want it to go faster, you can. If you want it to go slower, you can. I just like 20. I thought it was a nice speed. Then, if this is in this state, the snake is going to turn left. Now, by left, I have picked minus 10. Okay, by moving this slider, as you might be able to see, if it goes up into positive numbers, and down here is in minus numbers, and that is how we go left and right. Left is minus numbers, right are positive numbers. So left, right. If the light intensity, the reflected light intensity, is greater than 20, we switch to this part of the program, where still the B motor is going, because we still want the robot to go forward, but the robot's head will turn right at a speed of 20, uh, sorry, a speed of 10. And I've done that because that is a positive number. And again, that's on. That's really all that you need to, to um, need to put to make this work. May not, so I'm not saying that uh, that was probably the most efficient way of writing the piece of code, but to be honest, it works. And therefore, I don't see the point of overcomplicating anything. Um, at this use, you can see he works. If you have problems, like I said, check the ports, make sure he works. The one thing I have also included by adding another switch within the loop is this. So someone stands at the end of the line and then he lunges at them. He also makes a sound. I'll upload this video separately, but it's a nice shock to someone who is standing at the end of the, the line. So as I said at the start of the video, I know it seemed like a lifetime ago, that there are limitations and this is the limitation he can't go round corners he starts going round and then loses himself and then just goes completely AWOL if anyone knows obviously well obviously this is because of the physical build rather than the program so if anyone uh, is interested in sort of fixing up the physical build of him so he can move so the A motor can allow him to move a lot better please get in touch with me because I would like to collaborate and make this robot, you know, like the best it can be. Because obviously it's a bit boring just going in a straight line. Um, hopefully I have 
sort of picks up on everything. If there are any questions, just drop me a message. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope I haven't bored you to tears. I know it's been a long video and well done for sticking to the end. Um, but yeah, hopefully everything's been covered. I've set out to cover everything, but knowing me, I get sidetracked. This has been a long video, so feedback would be great because it has taken me a good four hours to film, compile and edit everything. Um, so please let me know your thoughts, comments. If you've got any questions, let me know. Hopefully I haven't bored you to tears. Thanks for watching, guys. Good night.